Hello? Hello? Is this thing on? Anyone in there? Can you guys see me? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Oh, hey guys, what's going on? Nerdy Noob here. Welcome back to another video. Um, wow. I think it's been since like October since I filmed a legitimate actual video. Maybe it hasn't been that long. I feel like it's been a real long time though. What's going on everybody? Nerdy Noob here. Whew, it's, it's been a long time and I wanted to check in with you guys, do one of these weird, you know the weird like update videos that I do every so often because I just fall off the face of the earth and then you guys are just like, what's going on? And I'm like, I don't know. So a few things. This video is gonna be short. I swear it's actually gonna be short because I wanna try to edit it and, f and post it today, which is Sunday the, I don't even know what day, the 18th, but I also wanna do a stream later, but I wanna release this before I do the stream, so, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Oh man, this table's really squeaky. A few things. One, I took a break. You know, at the end of last year, I was really caught up in the Funko Pop hype, and it was like really stressful, and I started opening up Pokemon cards and realized like I really enjoy doing that and so I shifted my channel and then I kind of just shifted it to just being streams because it's so much easier to stream because you don't have to edit videos and yeah you know mixed reactions of course I want to say thank you to anyone who stuck around and stayed subscribed to my channel I did notice a lot of I think I lost like 3,000 subscribers during this process but that's cool you know I've always told you guys that my number one goal is to stay true to myself and to make sure that I'm enjoying what I'm doing and if I'm not to just not do it right so I switched over Pokemon cards and I had a blast doing that. I'm still doing it. I think with anything I do in my life, I, I'm usually like, I can stress myself out. And I did the same thing with Pokemon cards. I got so into it. I got so into collecting and selling and doing all these things. And I've talked about this with you guys before that like it was overwhelming. Like I'm even overwhelmed by Pokemon cards right now, but I love opening them still. Like I love opening them. So I've just tried to find a better like balance and not to go crazy, because that's what I was doing. So I'm still working on that, and you're still gonna get a lot of Pokemon videos from me. I wanna do more unboxing videos for Pokemon of me getting to open up stuff, because I think when I started doing live pack breaks, I stopped kind of, there are times where I stopped opening up packs for myself, although that's not true. I opened up so many packs during, when I was trying to collect the Shining Fates set, <laughs> like so many packs, so many packs that I wasn't supposed to open but I did anyways. So there's that. The other thing is, I still like Funko Pops. I still buy Funko Pops, actually. I don't buy them as often. I'm not as attuned or accustomed to the drops that they have. I love getting the notifications when Funko randomly drops Funko Pops, which I really enjoy, actually. And there's been times where I buy some, and there's been times where I don't. I see it. I'm really a little bit more picky about my purchases, where I'm looking at the pop, like, do I really want that or not? Um, one of the other updates that I was going to make, I think, is about to maybe make an entrance. Maybe not. I can't tell. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's not your turn yet. It's not your turn yet. Just, just give me a few more minutes, okay? Um, okay. So... I still have one a lot of mystery box like Funko Pop mystery boxes that I had yet to open and I really want to open them. I never o I don't like opening mystery boxes off camera because then I feel like if I say like oh look what I got from this box you're gonna be like rigged. And so I have a bunch of those that I really want to open. I've still been buying some mystery boxes but not as often as I did before. So I've decided moving forward I'm just gonna film whatever I want. It might be Pokemon, it might be Funko Pops. I think I said that before, but I'm actually gonna do it. I'm just gonna like do whatever I feel like. Um, I actually just went to Dave and Buster's last week and usually I, I wait to cash out. Oh my gosh, it's very loud, that's very loud. I mean, it's almost your turn. Um, I usually hoard my tickets on my card, but this time I actually cashed out because I got some really cool prizes that I'm excited. I wanna do a video for that there. Um, NFL items that I'm super excited for. Okay, let me just tell you the next big news because it's coming back again. I made the decision, so you guys know, March was a really rough month for me. Like, really rough. Tess ran away and I lost Cube, and uh, when I say lost Cube, so Tess ran away and she's lost. Cube was hit by a car and I had to put him down, and it was really, really hard, really hard. Just even thinking about it, it's really hard. 
I did get cubes, ashes. Um, maybe at some point I might, I want to like make a tribute video to him, but I don't know how, if that's going to work out. Um, so I talked to you guys a little bit because I was like, what do I do? You know, the reason why it mattered to me is Mac. Mac was really, really close with Cube. Really, really close with Cube. They were like basically best friends and um, Mac was having a really, really hard time. Like really hard time. I was having a hard time, but Mac was having a really hard time. Um, he was waking up every morning crying. I would go to work and I would see my video footage from the downstairs and it would be hours of him not just crying, it was like how crying. Hey bud, hey bud. Hey, don't play with that. Don't play with that. It's almost your turn, just wait. Um, so I started kind of looking around and I wasn't as serious about it, but Mac just, there was something going on with Mac. You just, and I know that they say that cats grieve and you should give them time, but I, as I start going back to work more, I was really concerned about Mac and being alone at home all day long. So I started researching, and I'll be honest, it was a really hard process for me because I want to go through an adoption agency. I didn't want to, I actually had some friends who had, who knew people who just had kittens and they were like, you can have one. And I, and that's how I got Mac, but I really was trying to stay the route of um, adoption. I really liked being able to adopt Tess and Cube and, uh, you know, and it just, I don't know. There was something about that I really want to stick with it. Well, I was really insecure. Oh my gosh, be careful, be careful. I was really insecure because for adoption agencies, you have to fill out an application, which is fine. But a lot of them, they ask you like, what pets did you have in the past? What happened to them? And, stuff. and I was so concerned. Like I was just so insecure because within a span of what? It was like a week and a half. I literally lost a cat and I had to put a cat down. And I just was like, they're gonna read that and be like, no, you're not responsible enough. And maybe I'm, ow, ow, and maybe I'm not. Uh, anyways, ow. So I found an, an agency that was gonna do an adoption event at one of my local pet smarts. And I filled that vacation. I remember I filled it out and I was like, I, I had been communicating with them and then I filled out the application, I sent it in late the night before, and that whole night I was nervous. And the whole morning I was like talking to Amy like they're gonna decline me, I'm not gonna be approved. Cause you know they tell you like, we're gonna have a coordinator look it over and approve you. And I got there and like, I was flipping out and they're like, you know, are you here for a pre-event meeting? I was like, no, I don't think so. And then when I told, they were like, did you do an application? I said, yeah. And then they asked me my name, and they're like, oh yeah, we, I saw your application, so you're approved. So you can, and I was like, like literally after weeks of me flipping out and freaking out internally that I wasn't good enough to adopt from these agencies, it was like not a big deal. And everyone told me it wasn't a big deal, but I was just, I'm just like super insecure about it, of course. Anyways, with that being said, let me introduce you to, first, this is Jasper. His name was actually Jacques, uh, named after the, the uh, one of the mice from Cinderella. Um, he is, well, he was 12 months old when I got him, but it's been a little bit over a week. I think they were born, or he was born January 6th of this year, so whatever that makes him. Um, I originally, okay, so when I went to adopt, I wanted to get two, I wanted to get two kittens, because Mac would not, well, I knew Mac wasn't going to play with a kitten, so I wanted to get two kittens so they could keep each other entertained. Um, Jack, I actually fell in love with his brother, uh, via the pictures and the description and Jack was the brother of the one that I wanted and uh, I was a little bit uncertain about him This is such a bad reason, but because he's a short-haired cat I've actually never owned a short-haired cat before and I was like, oh, no, I, I think I need a medium-haired cat Like I don't know how short-haired cats work. I had this like thing about short-haired cats Like I swear that when they when their fur came out or whatever that it pricks you I don't think that's true. Anyways, uh, so Jasper, I changed his name to Jasper. His middle name is still Jacques, so he's Jasper Jack. Jack. Jasper Jack. It's like not Jack. I was calling him Jack. The reason I changed his name is because I called him Jack, and I think Jack and Mac, I think Mac was getting confused when I was trying to talk to Jack, and so I was like, oh, uh, I'll just change his name to Jasper. I just started calling him Jasper one day, and so I was like, I'm gonna change your name to Jasper, with the hopes that when he gets older, I can call him JJ. 
because I think that'd be cool. Anyway, so this is Jasper. Um, he is the rambunctious one of the two. He loves to play, but actually, they said that he just loves to play and kind of cuddle on his own time, but he actually is a cuddler when he's tired. So when he's not super playful, he actually loves cuddling. He's purring right now, I don't know if you can hear him. I have no idea if you can hear that, but um, this guy, he wasn't supposed to be the cuddle bug, and for the first week, I would wake up in the middle of the night and he would literally be sleeping on my neck, which I'm not used to. But he's fun, he's a little bit weird. Uh, I, I always like measure cats by how they react to Mac and how Mac reacts. Mac doesn't like anything because he's scared of everything. So Jasper's actually kind of a scaredy cat, like Mac. It's kind of weird, except the one thing he's not scared of is Mac, which is very interesting. It really creates an interesting dynamic because Jasper is like a mixture of Cuban tests where Jasper wants to go play with Mac and Mac does not want to play with him. So Mac, all of Mac's hissing has been basically towards Jasper because Jasper also like runs at Mac and Mac doesn't like that because Mac is a scary cat as well. But then Jasper also, when he's not running at Mac, also tries to just be around Mac. So like on the cat tree, Mac will be on the top and Jasper will be like laying on the, the level right below him. And so he like tries to be around Mac and tries to kind of play with him and Mac just didn't like it. So, you know, I think that that's how Cube kind of was. Cube was like really, I don't know, Tess liked to run at Mac and Mac didn't like Tess as much. Cube didn't run at Mac, but Cube was always trying to be around Mac and they became really close. So I'm not quite sure what will end up happening with these two, but the fact that he's not scared of Mac is nice. Um, I think that's kind of what's needed because Mac is scared of everything, right? Even these little kittens, Mac is like super scared. Um, I kept them separated. They stayed in my bathroom during the day when I first got them. And then I put them in my shipping room. Um, and they stayed there for the rest of the day and the, the night and the next day. And then the kids were over. And of course they wanted to be in that room. And eventually I just let them out of the room. And they've been out ever since. And yeah, it's been going really well. They all eat together. Uh, that's one of our newer things that's exciting. So yeah, he's got a big giant black spot on his head. And this little mark on his eye that looks like I don't know, every time I see him, I think he like has something on his face, but it's just him. Um, he's gonna be, I think he's gonna be a pretty big fella. Not fat, but very like, I think muscular. I don't know, he's very long. He's kinda like, Cube was like that too, where he's got big legs and he's very long. Um, I, my favorite, one of my favorite parts is distinction is he's got a white tip on his tail. Him and his brother don't look exactly alike, but sometimes in the dark they look similar, so I always have to look at the tail. Okay, so this is Jasper. I can't tell if he wants to hang out or if he's sitting in my lap now. But let me show you, let me introduce you to his brother. All right, everybody. Meet Gus. I did not change Gus's name. Uh, this is little Gus, so this is Jasper's brother. I think he might have been the runt of his litter because he's like little. He's like really small compared to his brother. Um, this guy is a cuddle bug and he's quiet. He plays with Jasper a lot, but he's also very quiet and shy. He's not scared of anything though. Like he'll just sit there. He'll like sit there when people walk in, he just kind of stares at them. So he's not afraid, but he's just, I don't know, he's very cuddly. He can literally fall, fall asleep in anybody's lap or anything. Um, the thing about both of these cats is when I got them, they were just recovering from an up, upper respiratory infection, which I didn't know anything about. Um, Gus is actually still fighting it a little bit. Uh, they, they only have had their first round of shots, so they need two more rounds. And unfortunately, because they came from a foster home that had a lot of cats, it sounds like there was somewhat of a kind of a URI outbreak there. So when I got both of them, they had finished all of their antibiotics, and he was okay. His eye is a little bit wonky. I can't tell if it's from the URI or if it, he just has a lazy eye. Um, but if you listen closely, he's really congested. Um, I called the adoption center, I, I brought him back in, and they gave him a sh another shot of antibiotics uh, on Friday, but he's still, it's pretty bad. Um, he has a hard time breathing, so he's really t tired a lot because he can, it's hard for him, I can see that he's like, you know when you have a stuffy nose, it's like harder to breathe. So he's been resting, um, we're gonna try to get him another type of antibiotic, I forgot what it's called, they're working on that for me. 
um, so that hopefully it'll help everything clear up with him. I didn't realize this, if you guys didn't know, your eyes, apparently when cats get them, they're like cold sores for humans. Like, once they get them, they always have it, and it can always come out, especially when they're stressed. So it'll be something that him and his brother will kind of be dealing with probably for the rest of their life. Um, I don't think Mac has ever had an upper respiratory infection, but I don't really know. Uh, again, I didn't know anything about that until now. So um, Gus is, I think his hair is going to be a little bit more like longer than Jasper. He's going to be more of a, I'm not going to say medium haired. I think it's going to be short to medium. So it's definitely longer than Jasper's, but not uh, as long as Max. Uh, he actually looks like a mini Mac. If his hair was longer, he'd look exactly like a mini Mac. He's got the gray, he's gray with white front paws, which Mac has. His back legs are white, which Mac has. Um, and yeah, so he's very similar, which is kind of fun. He does have raccoon eyes, if you look at his eyes. He's got these like black designs under his eyes, which make him look a little bit raccoony. Um, there you can see the, the nasal discharge coming from his mouth. And then maybe you can see that this eye, oh, it's his right eye. His right eye is a little bit smaller. Um, they told me it's because of the infection, but I, I think he might just have a, a lazy eye. Anyways. This guy likes to cuddle, he likes to sleep, he's very friendly, uh, he's not, even when he's playful you can kind of pick him up, so obviously out of the two, like Jasper's very independent, even though he's a scaredy cat, he's, he kind of does his own thing. This guy usually tries to find me, you can hear him crying, he's a little bit more, not needy, but a little bit more attached, which is, which is cool. I've literally never had a cat that does this. I've never had cats that sleep near me like they do. Mac will sleep near me, kind of, only for a little bit, and then he usually goes away. But these cats will actually like, sleep on top of me. Like my first night, Jasper was on my neck, and he was like under my back. I thought I had squished him, and I had to like check to make sure he was still breathing. It was a little bit of a thing. Okay, so there's that, and Mac is doing better. He's doing well. Um, I forgot how long it took Mac to kind of get used to Cuban tests, but they've all been like on the bed together. They all eat together. Um, we all hang out together. You know, when they get too close to him, Mac doesn't like that. When they run up on him, Mac doesn't like that, but they'll figure it out. Um, Gus is really chill. They've like, Mac has touched noses with all of these, with all of them, with both of them. Um, but he really doesn't bother Gus as much. He kind of just lets but Gus be. I hope he doesn't bother him just because you can hear how hard it is for Gus to breathe. So I'm always like, everyone, don't give him a hard time. He's just trying to live his life, you know? So I'll keep you guys updated with him and his status. They just say it's kind of one of those things that he kind of has to fight through. I, I can't wait till they can get fully vaccinated. Um, I think they're getting their second shot at the end of this month, and then they get an, their last shot in May and also get them their rabies shot. They're both neutered. Spate? No, neutered. They're both neutered. They're, they're dewormed. They have, like, the basic things. Um, so we'll just finish them up as time goes on. All right, so that was probably the biggest of the news that I had, but there's also one other thing that I told you guys uh, maybe like a month ago that I said was happening, but I couldn't talk about it because I wasn't sure. And so I wanted to tell you guys what that was because that's gonna be another kind of change. As you can see, this room's a mess. Not because of this change, but kind of. Um, I have a new person moving in to my house. I wanna give a big shout out to Rory because I said this on my live stream where I said something was happening and I didn't say what it was at all, and I said I wasn't gonna say yes or no to anybody, and then Rory totally guessed this first shot, and I was like, whoa, that was impressive. Um, so I have a new roommate moving in, and they're gonna move into the other bedroom. Uh, there's two bedrooms on this side of the house. It's the uh, bedroom, you guys probably don't know this, but the bedroom that Chris and Soren stayed in when they lived here. Um, and yeah, Amy's gonna be moving in. Amy's gonna be moving in probably within the next couple of weeks she started she brought a couple boxes i'm still in the process of trying to get everything out of that room and either into this room or back upstairs um but yeah i'm really excited about it me and amy have lived together before uh, we lived together many years in college and after college um and i think it just kind of seems right for where we both are in our lives i suppose her lease was up at her apartment and she wasn't super happy there and i was like i told her this last time i was like well when why don't you just you, you can move in with me and the first time she didn't want to because she had she had some life changes and wanted to kind of venture out and be on her own and i was like that's cool and that's when chris and soren had ended up moving in but kind of the same thing happened ow 
uh, where her lease is up. And I was like, oh, well, hey, if you want to move in. And she's like, really? And then she was like, yeah, actually, I might think about that. I was like, yeah. Um, Amy's here like three times a week anyway, so I feel like it doesn't matter. And she'll be able to have, obviously, I'm not going to charge her a whole lot of money and she's going to have her own room and her own bathroom and she's going to have to deal with me and my god kids and my family but uh, she's up for it. We talked about it and she's up for it and my cats I guess. So yeah that's happening and that's happening soon so that's what I've kind of been spending time is like um, all the boxes I have downstairs is like going through them and starting to move them up so that I can try to you know make the space more presentable for her even though she knows what she's getting into because I'm a hot mess and I'm a hoarder. But I'm excited for that. I'm excited for you guys to see that process because, you know, Amy's fun. We can do more taste test videos. I want to do a Capri Sun taste test video. I realized yesterday, like, I like all the different flavors and there's some flavors like, okay, there's some I don't like. And I was like, I wonder if I could actually like pinpoint these. So be on the lookout for that. I'm going to make her do that with me. A, a Capri Sun taste test challenge. All right. I made this video too long. So I'm going to end it here. I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. Um, thank you for so much for anyone who's purchased any of the packs for my pack breaks. I love doing pack breaks. I'm going to continue to do them. I'm going to try to do them once a week. Um, they're fun for me because I like opening up packs. But then I also like to share the enjoyment and the thrill with you guys. So all in all, it's fun. I also have just a lot of packs that, that I had purchased throughout the past five months that now I need to, you know, do something with them and help pay off my credit card. But this is about to run out of film. So I'm going to end it here. I appreciate you guys. Be on the lookout for more videos coming up soon. Um, thank you guys so much to everyone. And shout out to my Uncle Ron, who I think may be watching this. Uncle Ron, I miss you. And thank you so much for your text. I'm going to text you back in a little bit. But you're getting the video shout out. So shout out to you, Uncle Ron. Shout out to you. All right, guys. I hope you have a great day. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.